Hello and welcome to my channel. I thought today I was gonna do makeup and then I decided, you know what? I've been having a lot of astrology thoughts on my mind and I thought I would see like if you wanted to join me for some thoughts that I had about it. It's actually raining here today. I'm in Southern California and it hardly ever rains here. So when it rains, I know I'm like not saying that to make you jealous or anything. I just like, sometimes it just doesn't, it's just not very common for it to like rain. And so it was raining this morning. My cat was just like looking down, like watching everything like drop. And he thought it was really cool, the action. And then I was gonna do the makeup look, but I had to, um, I had to do a couple errands. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna like, I'm gonna grab my, um, my umbrella because actually using an umbrella here is very rare. So I brought my umbrella and I couldn't even use it. <laughs> It wasn't even raining that much, but anyways, I was going to do a full on makeup look today and I think I just started late because I ended up going to the store. And so I decided to just do something a bit casual. This is obviously like less makeup than I usually wear on camera. <laughs> so um, I'm just wearing like the blood sugar, um, the blood sugar palette, the new cavity collection. And I'm sh this is kind of like just a neutral look. So you can still do like a neutral look with this palette. And then I was just gonna totally like go um, natural underneath, but I put a tiny bit of red because I thought, hey, it's the blood sugar palette. So I'm wearing my astrology sweater. And um, I was thinking about right now, we are like in a new moon in Pisces. And it's been there for a couple days. Um, I was feeling it before it came on, but this is a new moon. New moons are always like good times to like set affirmations of what you want for the next coming year even, or the next coming month, but new affirmations in your life. And just contemplating things, letting old energy go. So it's, it's a new moon in Pisces. And so I don't know about you, but I've been feeling it because I've been very, very emotional lately. So um, it's if you've been emotional, that's why, and we're going to be in 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 it for a few more days. So new moon in Pisces. Pisces is a water sign. So and it's raining today. You know that's kind of cool, but. <laughs> um, you know, we might have like a lot, a few more days to where we might feel emotional, but those are, those are good. Emotions are good. I, I find it fascinating with Pisces because I, I heard long ago that it was like, Pisces is like the end of a cycle. Pisces is like, um, when love actually finally comes together. And I always thought, what does that mean? You know, and it didn't actually hit me until this new moon. Um, so the astrologer that I listen to, um, Bracca Goldsmith, I will link her YouTube channel. She's an excellent astrologer. And she said this one thing that just really, really hit me and really, really made sense to me. So I want to share that with you. And then I kind of want to like elaborate on my own theories about it. So she said that um, um, Pisces energy is kind of like dual energy. So there's like dual energy. And what I mean by that is a push and a pull, like a polarity. Okay. Push, pull, push, pull, like polarity. And what she said was that it's all of this energy swimming around and pushing and pulling you. So what's going to happen is what you're going to get, you're going to have to tap into your intuition because it's going to be so like chaotic. So then your intuition will actually just kind of flow to you like swimming, like water. And that kind of made a lot of sense to me because I've been really, really into this whole, I feel like Gemini energy is um, like the duality, but like um, almost like the duality, like boom, like slammed up against each other. Um, whereas with Pisces, if it's duality, it's, it's a little bit more peaceful at this point. 
so combative with fire energy, like Gemini is fire and, you know, fiery um, compared to emotional and like the Pisces water sign of being more of a flowing energy. And it really made sense to me because I always, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, how it, this whole idea has been a huge um, portion of my meditations this past week year actually um and um ever since i put i put up i put up a um a video on the age of aquarius and i kind of think that this is actually part of it but basically male masculine and feminine energy i really feel that that's a planetary thing and that there's planets that have masculine and feminine energies and actually that is true so I'm actually thinking of this in terms of the whole Pisces thing because um, because it it's like it's like when you're finally feeling peace and tranquility and like soothingness, emotional soothing from the masculine and and, and feminine energies that have been normally well this whole era have been fighting and in your face kind of thing for the last whole era. <laughs> so in my opinion, I feel like it's possible that this is an end of the era and that Pisces, since it's the last zodiac sign, it's kind of tying everything in that we've learned together or that we've learned through this whole cycle, well, the zodiac cycle anyway, but perhaps, perhaps even the whole era, I don't know. I've been painting, I've been, painting about um, masculine, then I'll just show you. My painting is not finished, but I'll show you what I painted so far. So I came across this thought that, or this idea um, of, right, I'm not finished with it. I still need to do like more flames on the phoenix. That's a phoenix. And a phoenix is female energy and celestial, celestial female energy. I put, um, the moon is a feminine, a feminine energy. And then the dragon is masculine energy with the sun. So I'm going to make this like this is Venus and then we're looking at it from the world and then I'm going to put the rest of the feminine planets on this side and the masculine ones on that side. Pluto's going to be like really small. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, as you can see, I've had this, I'm not lying, I've had this stuff on my mind here. So um, yeah. I just think that it's all kind of like, calming down now and and working itself out and perhaps this is the time where it all gets tied in together into like you know like love and emotional feelings of of feeling more complete and feeling more whole um and feeling um more infinity um so. i do believe that we will be entering more into um, where we are dissolving our patterning. So even though we are male and female, I feel like I'm not really talking about gender here. I'm talking about the energy. I think, I think the patterning is gonna slowly dissolve. I don't know how long it's going to take, hundreds of years or whatever, but I think that's the ultimate plan, what happens in the universe anyways. So I think it's happening here and our patterning will start dissolving. If you've already noticed this past year, we haven't been as interested in things that we used to be. And some of that is um, working itself away a little bit. And also we've been as, as a whole, as a whole world, I think we've been a lot more compassionate than we have been before because of of all of this that has happened to the whole world. I think it's helped us to be a little bit more compassionate. You know, we're wearing masks and we're wearing, you know, we're cautious. And okay. then on, on March 28th, up, there's gonna be a full moon in Libra. So M Libra is the, the great balancer. So there's going to be more balancing. And then the beginning of April, Mercury will enter Aries. So 
I don't know. I just, I find it all really interesting and I, I don't know if you do and you can just like let me know if you're interested in this kind of thing. But I just have been noticing that, you know, for this past whole year, I've been meditating a lot more and I just want to encourage you to, to do that, to wear crystals. A lot of the jewelry that I wear isn't just for jewelry, it's crystals. Crystals has energy and information. Um, information is stored in crystals from however, you know, long ago the earth was formed and the planets were formed and everything and that's information and your body can feel it. So I highly recommend to wear crystals and to use them. You could even just put them in your pocket. But let me kind of give you one little tip of how to wear crystals or how to use them to help you. So basically, I mean, you could go to a gemstone store and just ask for help, or you can look up something that you're struggling with, like perhaps if it's, um, you know, depression or, you know, you don't feel grounded or, um, you know, anxiety or you're having, or even, even if it's um, physical problems, like if you're having problems with circulation or whatever it is, you can search which gemstone is best for that ailment. Like for example, which gemstone is best for da da da. And then you can actually look it up and see if you have anything like that in your collection that helps to alleviate those symptoms or helps that. And um, you can, you know, see if that helps and just wear it around. I, it has helped me so, so much. I cannot even tell you. And a lot of times I'll just go into my collection and the stones and the crystals will just speak to me and be like, you need this today. And I'm like, okay, so let's wear it. So like today I'm wearing like love and I'm wearing um, a red one for, um, for grounding and for creativity and um, orange for, um, you know, your solar, solar plexus chakra and things like that. So there's different things that your chakras need and, and different things like that. Um, it's good to wear, it's, it's really, really good to wear gemstones. And, um, maybe I'll include like a link or something of like, um, what you, what could help you with that. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll make a link so you can see what else is good. And I also encourage, as always, to paint because it's really relaxing and meditational and fun. Um, yeah, so I've just been um, just laying low. I've had some interesting things come up that have been emotional from this new moon in Pisces. So I've just been kind of like, whoa, stepping back a little bit and like, whoa, what's all this freaking emotional energy? Wow. And then come to find out, you know, that it's because it's a new moon in Pisces and um, luckily I've gotten through a lot of the toxicity that was happening and I think I'm overcoming some of the, some of the patterning that was like, um, that needed to go and I had to process that. So sometimes you have to like fully process something before you can accept and you have to let go of the darkness and the toxicity before you can accept like the goodness and the light and things like that. So then the funny thing is my emotions were like sad and then I got over all of that toxicity and figured out a solution and then then I started crying tears of joy <laughs> then it was like I was having just like all these like tears of joy and everything but you know what that's that's fine like that's good it's good to feel and it's good to express yourself that way so now I've just been overcome with some beautiful emotions and I really, really do think it's this new moon of Pisces and I just wanted to share some of these thoughts with you and talk to you about it. I've been, I'm not a tarot card reader, but I've been trying to learn and I, because I do understand um, a lot of these types of energies, I can get the gist of it. I just don't have the memory of, oh, this card means that or this card means that, you know, but. I can do tarot card readings for myself and get very extremely accurate information, but it takes me a while to understand what the card is meaning and then I sort of build off that. When I get better, I'll do the, I'll do a little bit more of that just here and there. Like it's not going to be a 
it's not gonna be a tarot card reader. This is just gonna be like a me, you know, sort of channel. So, so I just wanted to talk about that and to um, you can also look up how to set new moon intentions. There's different rituals that you can do, um, but I recommend to just try something that that you've been um, thinking about wanting to let go of and what you want to affirm for for the next year or or you know the next year from now anyways and i encourage you to to do that and um because it also does feel like when you accomplish something like let's say you do a new moon intention and then you actually accomplish it the following month it does feel really good and accomplishing goals actually will increase your endorphins, which actually then make you feel better. So when you do make new moon intentions and do try really hard throughout the month to accomplish them, it's actually really, really a really positive thing for you in the future. So, and we get 13 moons a year to do that. So um, we, um, it, it's kind of necessary, I think, and it's important. So yeah, I recommend if you're interested in all of the new moon stuff, look into it a little bit more and I'll attach a couple of links for crystals and crystal healing and things like that. And back to the regularly scheduled makeup tomorrow, I'm doing more stuff with the blood sugar palette because I'm just really loving it today. I've got the, I got slathered the, uh, the highlighter palette like pretty much everywhere. So it's really, really, cute and fun to use. So yeah, I hope you're having a great week. Love you. Bye.